Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Occult Chronicles. Let's get back into the mansion and see if we can hunt down that elder vampire. What have we done since we last talked? The nothing. I mean, what, let's try to wrap up the last video somewhat. We began exploring the second floor, I believe. And we're also turning in a few of the quests now. We also fought one of the mistresses of the Elder, one of, the, one of his wives, and defeated her. I believe there are two others still left somewhere in the mansion. And they will all be difficult. We began utilizing some of my new abilities. We picked up quite a few decent items as well. We've got a sledgehammer, which also is adding another swords to us, making us extremely potent in melee combat. Looking pretty good for cups. Oh, that's right, we picked up some rope to help us as well, which is getting us another plus one cups. And we picked up two additional spells as well. As Oh, and we also grabbed Merlin's cap. That's right. So this is looking really great for us, all things considered. And we have six wild cards, or jesters, or whatever these are called. Fate, or what have you. Here's our current edges again, just so everyone remembers what they are, so I remember in particular. Our current bones, we have enough, we have the dice, oh I love this one. Look at that, that's amazing. That'd be a great dice just to make. Well, would it be Tim? There's no numbers on any of the sides, so you wouldn't be able to tell what, what it's doing. We picked up three clues, and we still have a ton of quests. We still have to convince the ghost that her boyfriend um, passed on. We have to return the wrench. We need to find this thing in a chair. Yeah, we gotta find so many of these quests still somewhere around here. Alright, well, let's get back to exploring more of this location. We are on the first floor. Do we stay on the first floor, come over here and explore more of, more of this? No, we'll go back upstairs instead. We'll explore the attic, and then we'll come down on this side when we're done with the attic. Go over here, explore all this, and turn in quests on the first floor. I'm expecting another token to be drawn very soon. Love the sound effects of this game. The little stepping up everywhere. It's so well done. Oh god! That's not at all what I wanted. That's that's the cellar. We don't want to be in the cellar. Well, actually, since we're going to be over here now anyway, we're going to be very close to places we have not yet explored. The attic's on this side, Tim. Go to the attic. Stick with your original plan. Papers we don't need. Zombies. You hate these guys. This place certainly knows how to keep you on your toes. Just don't build a summer home here. Ooh, their difficulty's 13 now. It used to be 11. Nice. Five points already. Good thing we drew that one first and not the king. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the queen. We're going to win... Oh, or the king. Let's play the king to give us quite a few more points. Good thing we did. All oh, those wands. My goodness. You won the battle. The dismembered zombie bodies still twitch around on the floor, putting on quite the show. And one life for our efforts. We're looking really good for our stats, 32 sanity, 28 life. Just keep in mind again, everyone, that as we... The better we do, the worse it will be when we begin failing these tests more often. We're right here. We may as well turn in the handyman quest really quick. A growing sense of panic. As the clock continues to tick, you become more and more anxious and nervous. You must find the Elder Sanctuary before it is too late. 
All challenges that involve swords as the primary suit receive a minus one modifier number of trick cards placed on the board while this story icon is active. Getting a little tougher. We have three more tokens before I need to go down into the cellar just to make sure that we don't run out of time. I won't be able to fix this without me wrench. Can you go and fetch it for me? I left it around here somewhere. Had a big leak and needed to seal it. These damn things are everywhere. The ghost goes back to his work. It looks like a wrench might indeed help him out. You wonder just what type of wrench he needs. You decide to tell the ghost that you have found the wrench and pretend to give it to him. Well done. I'd hoped that you would now be my apprentice, but it looks like you were too smart or quick for that. Oh well, time is a-wasting. Got more of these holes to plug. This one here was just a small leak. With that said, the ghost vanishes. Wow. So he was hoping that I would be killed and become a ghost like him. We gain a map. Giving us a plus one wands bonus. Holy crap, that is awesome. Got unlucky with everything else, though. If we use it, however, we lose the map. I'm a big fan of just holding on to these things for the passive bonuses. Let's see what it does, though. Reveal the location of all stairs on the level and some of the rooms leading away from the stairs. That could be really useful if we get down to the basement. Or, well, we will get down to the basement eventually. I have so many quests, I'd love to turn them in before I give up up here. Darn it, this kind of stinks in a way. Okay, well, is there nothing else up here? I got all the rooms, I think. Oh, no, we did not. You still have tons of rooms, a ton of room left to explore on that side of the house. All right, well, we'll get over there from the attic instead. The attic isn't as large as the first or second floor, but it will be very dangerous up here. We should check it, whatever it is. A pile of junk. Oh, thank God. You notice a small pile of junk cluttering up a section of the floor. Upon closer examination, you see an assortment of typical cast-off items, broken pieces of this and that. It doesn't look like much, but it might be worth investigating. Oh, that's not a bad draw. We got two pages and a king. And we win with two points extra. I think that's going to be two card draw, two or three. You can find the strangest things in junk piles. Four bullets. We don't need any bullets, though. Now, a heads up that I added stopping power to the Luger. However, the game works like Armageddon Empires. Our Luger does not actually have any special abilities when it comes to giving us options for dialogue. It only, it's so because our Luger spawn without that effect. So, we just have to remember that we have it and use it for combat. Oh, there's gonna be a mushroom man in here. They're difficult to kill. We should do it anyway. Fungus man. You hear a shuffling sound and turn to face it. You can't actually believe what you were seeing at first. The only way to describe it is that it is a, a mushroom man. And it is truly horrific. I haven't fought mushroom men since Legend of, of Grimrock? Resist the horror. The creature can only be the product of some insane lab experiment. Wow, it would have been eight. Thank goodness for the plus one wands that we have. Uh, we have a queen and a page. Those are our two highest cards. Wow, we get to take the ace with our two. I'm going to play the page. I don't think we're going to win, and I want to reduce the damage we're going to take for sanity loss. Oh, but we do win anyway. Holy crap. Your mind is strong. You've seen things far worse than this. Heck, the coffee pot at Odd Headquarters has more fungus on it than this. It's made of fungus. I don't think that's possible. It doesn't appear to be particularly fast, but you remind yourself that looks can be deceiving. You are struck by the horrendous smell that must follow the thing around. You hope that there are no spores or anything floating in the air. The creature seems covered by fungus. Just your luck. 
It's a diseased mushroom man. Oh, so it's got a fungus with mold on it. Wasn't there, um, what was the name of the, the series? Crypt Keeper? Wasn't there a Crypt Keeper that involved some guy who was turned into fungus? He touched some sort of rock. It became like this itchy welt, and when it, the only way it would the itch would stop is when he soaked it in water. But then the welt would get larger and itch more, and he eventually became, I think, um, and like it would turn green in color too. And I think he became a fungus. That was a really disturbing video. Well, our chance to beat it is the same as our chance to flee it, so we might as well fight. We get one less trick now. For this, because swords is the primary suit. That's what it. That's the symbol all the way over there on the left. All right, attack the mushroom man. The only question you have is sautéed or stir fried. Stir fried. Stir fried. Two pages and a king. It's not very good for us. We can cast Odic Shield, but that's the only thing I can currently cast. Let's slip over a card. Okay, good. We'll take this one. Sorcery Battle Dispel. Sorcery Battle Psychic. Combat Sorcery Battle. We can't use these unless we're in a battle or psychic challenge. This one's Battle Sorcery Dispel. This one we're in combat, so we can still cast Odic Shield. I will wait to see if we, what untaken tricks we have before I cast Odic. Okay, let's use it. If you do not roll less than or equal to your modified pentacles attribute, then you take damage equal to the difference between the two. Wound symbols rolled count their pneumatic values towards the die roll as well as, sim as supply the amount of mandatory additional wounds. Five, that's awesome. You rolled less than or equal to your pentacles attribute. One point was blocked. Yeah, our unmodified amount. Draw X additional cards, where X is the number of pentacles rolled. We gained nothing useful here. That's really a shame. It shrieks a deafening blast that forces you to your knees. As you are trying to get up, it falls on you. Oof. Okay, well, let's do it again. Uh, we have a King of Swords and a Knight of Cups. Those are the only two decent cards we possess. Let's use the Knight. I'm desperate to get points to reduce the damage we take. Oh, that really worked out. We won. Oh, hello, King of Wands. Your efforts take huge chunks out of the creature's rubbery flesh. Soon it can't go on and topples to the floor. Should always save the game now after every battle. I don't want another. Uh, I don't want the game crashing again. And what are we saving up to next? I, th I think a talisman edge is what I want. Then we'll grab another evade trap, and then we'll be looking to probably increase my swords again. This is a really long hallway. I think we might have missed a secret door up here. There can be more holes up here as well on the floor. I'm a little nervous about this. Spiders. There's going to be spiders in here somewhere. Well, let's go find them. Malevolent shadows. Two creatures of shadows swirl around you. You recognize immediately that you are dealing with a type of ghostly creature that feeds off human emotions, fear and pain being the most succulent to the creatures. You can either stand firm and fight these creatures physically, or run and hope to fight another day. You decide to use your psychic talents to destroy the shadow spirits. They cannot be dismissed or reasoned with. They are the twisted and evil remnants of extreme human suffering. Or running, which is actually really flippin' difficult. Oh! 
What a terrible draw. We only have a page as our highest card. Still, we were able to use it there to get three points. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a swords of six or swords or lower. We did. Oh, thank God that we got really lucky. Holy crap, we were lucky we didn't get the King of Cups as well. Although we did have a Two of Cups, so that we would have played that there. You engage in a psychic duel. You stand firm and use your talents to bottle them up in a psychic containment field. Then you crush the, the field and push them into the spirit world. You found a clue. Awesome, that's why we're up here. You discover a pile of dead rats. Each one has been completely drained of blood. Something was very hungry. Young vampires sometimes feed this way if they are starving. Plus two trick bonus. Writhing mass of insects. You notice that the floor in front of you seems to be moving. You step closer thinking that it must be some sort of optical illusion. Suddenly, you step on something and it makes a squishing noise. You look down and see a writhing carpet of insects covering the floor. Scattered around the insects are the bones of its victims, of their victims. You've never seen so many insects together all at once. Waves seem to undulate across an ocean of insects. The patterns are almost mesmerizing. You get a very bad feeling at looking at this. It makes you afraid. Wow. Does it? Maybe it does. I don't think so. This is a, this is a, well, we don't have any kings, but this is a great hand. Two knights, two pages, and a queen. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. After all, you spent two weeks at odd survival school eating bugs and some other things that you would rather not think about. You count dozens of different species, and you wonder why they would all be gathered here together. The bones indicate a food source of some sort, but you wouldn't expect so many different types. Centipedes, cockroaches, ants, spiders. If you want to keep moving down the corridor, you're going to have to step on or over them. Oh, let's try this. Step across the insects. You decide to keep going and carefully step across the carpet of insects as best you can. Evade trap. Oh, God. This is a terrible roll. A draw for us. This is terrible. A page is the highest card we've got. Holy crap! No successes. You stumble and kick up a bunch of the insects. You immediately hear a loud buzzing chirp as the colony seems to react. You start to feel bites on your legs as the bugs try to swarm you. Worse yet, something seems to be taking shape in the middle of the colony. I will ignore both of these because I have my symbols on them. And we take two points of reduced sanity from this because of our one wild card. We lost, however, one of our talismans. Insect creature. A creature made up of thousands of bugs seems to be materialized with a swirl in the center of the colony. It moves towards you with alarming speed. The bones littering the floor now make all, now all make sense. We attack it. This will be a fight to the death. Probably yours. There are so many of them and you don't detect any sorcery involved in this. You just hope that you can hit it hard enough to disperse it and buy some time. We do have a king here. And we can use it to take the queen. You are pleased to find out that you hit the thing, it gets hurt. Soon large chunks of bugs are scattered across the floor. You need to act quickly though. This thing will most likely be formed. The carpet of bugs is still moving. again try to step across the insects. We have a King of Swords. We can use it to take the Queen of Swords, and that will let us get past it. So why am I so desperate to get across? Because I don't want to go back downstairs and across the first floor to get back up to the attic. Actually, we're on the second floor, but we're here. I want to actually just make it across this. Oh wow, that's lucky. We have a Knight of Wands to take the Page of Wands. Good thing I spent the Ten of Wands earlier. You shuffle here and there, careful not to disturb the giant colony. A few try to call up your leg to bite you, but they are easily brushed away. Shame we lost one of our talismans, the good one as well. Let's 
save the game again. I'm glad we made it across that. This is a really long attic. We need to search all of it. Well, we don't need to search all of it, but I want to. Could be another clue token up here. We want all the clue tokens we can get. Spiders. There's going to be spiders here. Absolutely 100% spiders. And probably a trapped victim in a web. A broken robot. You see a strange mechanical man over near the far wall. Hunching slightly forward, it looks like it has been deactivated or run out of power somehow. You have heard stories about these things from the old hands at Odd HQ. Robots, they are called. Apparently, there have been attempts by several nefarious organizations to build armies of them to conquer the world. We can't actually interact with it. It's part of a quest that we don't have. Giant spiders. Your attention is drawn to an area of thick spider webs that cover the walls and ceiling. It strikes you as odd how strong the strands look. A sudden chill shoots down your spine, and you realize there is a human -like, a, there's a human-like form cocooned within the web. That's when you see the movement and hear the distinctive chittering of the giant spiders. You've seen photographs of victims recovered from creatures like these. They are not pretty. Horror check first. The page will take their ten. Our king will take the four. Our page must be used on the knight. And we win. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. Holy crap! Two experience points from a... Ho it's our one option. Temperance gave that to us. These creatures are scary by any standard, measuring four or five feet across. But you've heard stories of much bigger ones. They are aggressive and will defend their territory and their food. Oh, we have a good chance of beating them, though, in combat. Much better than running away. It's time for some bug hunting. You remember Razax, your old drill instructor at the Odd Academy. He always loved the good bug hunt. Holy crap, this is not the good draw. We have a queen, we have two twos and an ace as well. We need to get five points. Let's see what we can do. Let's spend the seven here and then use our dagger to increase it. Awesome. You almost feel bad for these things, but then you are the body in the web. The body cocooned in the web has been dead for some time and likely sucked dry. You can't determine whether it is a man or a woman. You decide to cut away the, some of the web that encapsulates the body and see if you can identify it or find anything that might help you. Not with this draw, we're not. We have no face guards. Oh, we have a page. There's a page. We have to get very lucky, though, to win. We do! With one extra point. Thank goodness for our page of pentacles. You cut away some of the web fibers, but they come off reluctantly. After a little effort, you determined that the body was that of an adult male. He was dressed in some type of suit. Suddenly, a pocket of air opens up, and some objects fall out. They might be of help. For courage. We don't actually need any, though. Well, that was kind of useless. Khufu head! <laughs> I believe this creature is from... Oh, what is it called? Silent Hill. You've suspected that you were being followed for some time. When the opportunity to confront your tail arises, you grab it. You can't believe your eyes at first. Standing alone in the gloom is one of the most bizarre creatures you have ever seen. It seems to be wearing some type of pyramid hat on its head. It certainly does look dangerous. The creature looks like a product of some lunatic's nightmare or drug-fueled hallucinations. We'll play the queen. So, even if we don't... Oh, God, we're unlucky I, we did that. Well, actually, we had we had uh, more pentacles. And we, we win, just barely, to, to preserve our sanity. 
Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. You observe the twisted creature and wonder how it can move around with that cumbersome thing hung over its head. You've heard stories about dream creatures, manifesting in stalking locations where a convergence of psychic energies happened. You remembered a case that required odd agents to clean out an entire town. The Silent Mountain event of 1922. The good news is that this creature is not a ghost, and it can be hurt by conventional means. Oof, we gotta get lucky for this, though. We'll, we'll, we'll try killing it. You decide to take the fight to the creature. Time to put it back to sleep. Oh, we have a King of Pentacles and a Queen of Wands. That's very promising for us. We'll spend the Queen. We only need one more victory here. And we get it with our King of Pentacles. Thank God. I didn't want to have to use a spell. Oh, you know what? Let's, um... Let's use our dagger. It's free. We should always be using it. Good. That gets us even two more points, thanks to our ten there. Okay, awesome. The thing is amazingly quick and agile. You trade blows, but it's no match for you. Wonderful. Four experience points. Wow, we have nine saved. All right, let's take a talisman edge. This is a air one? Let's see. Sure, we'll grab air attuned, or I think. Um, what is talismanic really quick? There's a chance to have a talisman generate a resulted card during the results phase. X added to the chance where X is 10 times the level of the edge. This would give us a chance to get additional talismans. A 10% chance. I do not know if this is a single one only upgrade though, but we'll take it. I want more talismans. Oh, I'm sorry. Whenever there's a chance to have a talisman generate a result of a card, X is added to the chance. This doesn't give us talismans if there were none there. It just increases our chance of getting a talisman if there was one generated. I think we'll grab this, actually. We only have one talisman so far. With our five other points, I'm tempted to increase our cups, but I think we'll grab another Evade Trap Edge. Let's actually, first, let's save the game. Oh, nice. This is indeed an upgradable one. Okay, how about that? Alright, so let's grab another edge. Before any cards are revealed during the results phase of Evade Trap, X random sanity cards are selected and reduced by one. Where X, okay, so this selects a card, maybe multiples, and reduces their damage. Before any cards are revealed during the results phase of Evade Trap Challenge, one random sanity lost card is selected and reduced value by X. Before any cards are revealed during this results phase of Evade Traps, X random health cards are selected and reduced. For any Evade Traps challenge, one point is added to your trick-taking score for each revealed and unmatched trick card on the board, up to X, where X is the value of the edge. This is this, this conversion of energy is the same thing as our uh, door-locking one. Oh, I love Sense Danger. At the beginning of any Evade Traps challenge, X random tricks placed on the board are in a scryed state where X is the level of the edge. This will let me see what's actually there. I'm going to take Sense Danger. I think we'll, I think I'll want my swords up next. Or, no, I, we'll want another heroic feat, I think. We have the space for it in our cups. Okay, so... Now, I really want to play Temperance. Right, is that the one? Is that my... No, um... What's the, what's the one card? The Sun. I really want to play the Sun. The Burning Ghost. From out of nowhere, a ghost appears bathed in flames and begins running towards you. Your eyes widen in disbelief as the ghost heads directly at you, all the time seeming to be trying to put the flames out by patting its hands over its body. Although he makes no sound, you could swear that you can hear him screaming in your mind. 
That must be terrifying. It's a good draw, actually, but we have to hope for swords. We didn't get it. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. <laughs> but we reduce that damage by two, so I don't think we take any. The ghost runs straight up to you and flails at you. Either wants you to help put itself out or spread the flames over to you as well. You recognize the ghost as a class three full roaming repeater. It probably relives this death run every day at the same time. These types of spirits can be very dangerous. Dispel the ghost using your psychic abilities. You won't be able to reason with it due to its agitated state, but you should be able to destroy its manifestation with your psychic kinetic talents. Well, we better hope there's swords, because we're not winning otherwise. Let's use our sun here. Fourteen points. You use the power of your mind to hold the ghost and then slowly squeeze it out of this world and into the spirit world. And nothing. How about that? However, all of our edges have improved one point. So now we've got three points reduced from all traps we encounter. We have a 6% chance to gain courage. We have two points given if we leave a card unflipped with pin sense. We have an extra two points applied to the bump up value of any non-face hand cards whenever we use a combat ability. We've got a 20% increased chance of a talisman being generated when a character can generate a talisman. And we have two cards revealed and a scried state whenever we encounter a trap. Class 1 Haunting. We've fought these enough. I'm not going to bother reading them. We fail horribly here. Um, let's use... Oh, what is this? Let's, let's use Chain Spirit on this 4 and 3. We will lessen or equal to our unedited... Really, our, our pentacles is only three? Maybe we should improve that again. You will less than or equal to your pentacles attribute. One point was blocked. Select a revealed... Oh, no. We're fine. We're fine. I'm reading that wrong. Because we rolled less than our pentacles attribute, nothing happened, and we block one point anyway from something. Select a revealed trick card and swap it with a play card. We draw one card after this. I want this one. Oh, we, we're allowed a second pick. Oh, I don't want a second pick. But I have to. That sucked. Okay. How about that? And we drew a card as another pentacle, so it doesn't freaking matter. You engage in a psychic duel with the ghost. It overwhelms your psychic defenses and tries to get inside your mind. Okay, let's, uh, let's use the king, which will really help us out here. We win. So I have to pick two cards. Maybe I did that wrong. I, maybe I should have just clicked OK. Maybe, I don't remember. I'll have to pay attention next time I, I can use that, that card. You engage in a psychic duel with the ghost. It turns its mindless anger and desperation against you, but you prevail. You feel that whatever it was before would thank you for the peace you gave it. Come on, arcane energy. Eh, one experience point. Not the worst. Let's take... Swords? No. We'll begin working toward a heroic feat. A poison gas trap. You feel your foot press down on the pressure plate, and then hear the click as the tablets hit a pan of acid. You, a cloud of poisonous gas erupts on the floor beneath you. It gets better to go with instinctive roll. You roll out of the way of the poison cloud using your reflexes and instincts. Notice the super high difficulty of this. This is why traps are so dangerous in this game. 
Uh, we've done better. The good news is that I at least see what's up there for my Ten of Cups. Wow, and we've won. Awesome. You instinctively twist and roll to the side of the billowing cloud. Or the fortune. Gives us, what, four of them now, I think, total? Oh, this will be the thing in the attic. A very difficult demon. There you are. The thing in the attic. You smell death. Not the desiccated scent of moldering bones, but the smell of a slaughterhouse. Then you notice the bones littering the floor. It accompanies the realization that you are being watched. Suddenly, you hear the bones start to rattle, and a creature rises out from under them that stand in front of you. It is Eldritch, and it is terrifying. Your eyes widen disbelief as you look directly at the Eldritch creature. You can feel an aura of evil radiating from it. Ah, oh, shame, we misplayed that a bit. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. The thought of ending up a pile of bones in this godforsaken attic makes you weak in the knees. We stopped that damage, though. The creature is a sorcerer of some ability. You can feel the energy flowing through it. You remember a briefing about a cult that worships eldritch creatures made of human bones. It seems to have set up its own little snack shack up here in the attic. The creature appears to be encased in some strange exoskeleton. It stands there watching you. Waiting. The next move seems to be yours. We can try running. Try communicating with it, but we don't have a good chance with only four draw. Why do we only have only four draw? Shouldn't that be five? Our wands attribute is five. Oh, because there might be a penalty associated with it. Secondly, duel it, use sorcery, try to defeat it. Uh, they're all bad options. I'm not comfortable with any of them. If we attack it, I think it gets stronger if we don't defeat it. Maybe we should just run? We only have four draw. That is not a great deal of cards in our hand. We're not going to be able to duel it to death. Sorcery or fighting are the best options for us. Arguably, sorcery is good because we have seven tricks and six draw as opposed to five tricks and seven. We'll attack it. Let's do it. Oh, holy crap. This is a fantastic hand. Three kings and a knight. Unless there's all just pentacles up here. Bam. Victory. Oh, wow. They were almost all pentacles up there. You're, you're kidding me. Okay, we won. You battle the creature all over the room. The fight ranges across piles of bones. In the end, it can't endure the punishment that you dish out, and its physical body collapses to the floor. A shame. We only get two cards from that, though. I think there was a talisman that could have been there. Oh, too late now. Vampire wife Askask, uh, Akasha. You hear a woman's voice singing softly ahead, and it catches you off guard. You can actually sense a psychic presence of some type of potent evil. The singing continues, and it sounds very close by. You slowly step forward to identify the source of the singing, and it is as bad as you had imagined. One of the vampire elder wives emerges slightly from the gloom with a hiss. You can feel the creature radiating a dark aura of fear. She wants you to panic and do something stupid. That's not a terrible hand. We have a knight and a king, and a queen. But we're not going to get a target of nine, I think. Oh, maybe we will? Wow, we do. We hold on to our sanity. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. You've been trained to fight Nosferatu, and this doesn't scare you in the least. But we were scared of a, of a thing of bugs, though. You've read the report of, on how other vampire covens were cleaned out, and you suspected that you might encounter something like this. When she begins to talk directly into your mind, you start to get worried. I've been singing a song for you, my dear. My name is Akasha, 
and I have a gift for you. We we'll try running away. Psychic dueling is going to be a slaughterhouse for us. Uh, we should probably fight it. This so sp the the spells give us more tricks, which give us more options to take cards. This has more draw. We can use our weapons though. We'll try combat. You need to pierce its heart, incapacitate it, and then remove its head from its body. We have a King of Wands and a Queen of Pentacles. Those are the only good cards we've got, though. We'll use the Queen now. It'll reduce the damage we'll take. And um, we win. Uh, do I want to use the King? Yes. I, I want to win this, guaranteed. You strike hard and incapacitate the creature. Acting quickly, you pierce its heart and then sever its head before it can free itself. Van Helsing would be proud. Wow, Harley is an amazing combatant. Covered with tons of vampire ghoul blood and everything. Good for her. Judgment. You receive plus two card draws and plus two trick cards for any persuasion or deception challenges while this card is in your inventory. Storm Cloud. Another talisman. We have two air talismans. Now this one has a much a lesser chance of showing up, but its release chance is also only 4%. Nice, holy crap. That was awesome. And that's why you want to do the higher level encounters. You have a greater chance of getting, well, you have a chance of getting greater rewards. The rush, wow, the Rakshasha. You smell the pipe smoke before you even see the creature sitting in the chair. By the time you realize what you are facing, it's too late to stop and quietly sneak away. You've only seen pictures in old illuminated manuscripts, but you recognize the creature immediately. It's a Rakshasha, a demon of the Great Illusion. You've seen enough legends turn out to be true, but this one still shocks you. This was a D&D &D creature. I was interesting. I wonder if it's based on any actual um, myths or lore or what have you. Uh, if I recall the dozen dragons, only a blessed crossbow bolt has a has a hundred percent chance of killing it immediately if the bolt strikes it. Otherwise, they're very powerful. If I recall D and D correctly, an aura of evil surrounds this creature. You try to remain calm and keep your grip on your sanity. Definitely play the page here, and we win. Your mind is strong. You can almost even see through the illusion and behold the creature's true form. The Rakshasha beckons you to sit down next to it. You feel a tremendous sense of unease as you approach the creature. You know that according to legends it can shape change. This one seems to have chosen the appearance of a tiger. These masters of illusion love a good bargain and the taste of human flesh. Looking at the clutter of dishes on a tray nearby, you hope this one still isn't hungry. We will probably- oh wow, we can definitely kill it. We have fantastic chance to kill it actually, but I think we'll try talking with it. You sense a keen intelligence before you. You should be able to communicate with the creature and find out why it hasn't killed you already. Our target is low because we have that new wild card in our hand, our new fate card, whatever they are called. We also have plus two tricks. We'll give us a try. Oh god, are we've drawn terrible cards though. Let's play the nine. Play this nine. Play this three. The Rashaka speaks to you, but you can't understand uh, what it's saying. It seems to become a little irritated with your lack of understanding. You feel that you had better resolve this quickly. We can still talk to it again. Let's do so. Another god-awful draw. Oh, we have a King of Pentacles, though, which I didn't see before. That'll help reduce the damage we take, but we're not, I don't think we're going to win this one. Oh, we do! Just barely. Wow. The Rishaka speaks to you quite easily. It wants you to do it a favor, and in turn it will let you live. The Rakshasha puffs away on its pipe and explains its proposal to you. It wants you to fetch some papers for it in a room nearby. It doesn't know where exactly they are because there is a ward in place to keep them hidden and safe from him. He wants you to find them and bring them back. If you do so, you will not only be allowed to live, but you might also find that the Rakshasha is a generous benefactor. At least, that's what it seems to suggest.
a laboratory. Let's save the game really quick. And step in. A mad scientist. You see a strange man hunched over a work table that is cluttered with blueprints, tools, gadgets, and colorful test tubes. He barely takes any notice of you at first, as if he had frequent visitors to his laboratory, which you find highly unlikely. You recognize the man from his odd file almost immediately, Dr. Laszlo Benway. What could he possibly be doing here? There is obviously some strange convergence that is attracting the most notorious and nefarious characters and supernatural entities to this place. We try talking with him, we don't have a great chance. Oh, but actually it's better than fighting him. We can also just leave him alone. We'll leave him alone. I don't want I don't need to fight him. He can give you a series of quests in here to do. Each one makes him a little stronger, but rewards you with treasure. I think you might have to end up fighting him at some point, though. I never completed the entirety of the series. Sometimes there's another encounter in here, but I don't see it here today. Alright, everyone. We've been playing for, it feels like, 40 minutes or so. So I think we'll stop here. When we come back, we'll explore the leftovers here in the second floor. Then we'll go back downstairs and explore the rest of them, turning a bunch of quests. And by then, we'll probably be up to here on our tokens. Time to go down to the cellar, probably. I will see you guys then. Thank you all for watching, and take care, everyone.